What are your current projects right now, Kenny? Um, I just finished up playing at the Kennedy Center Honors in Washington, D.C., um, which is a, a huge um, evening where they honor um, some musicians and actors. In this particular year, they honored Robert De Niro. They honored uh, uh, Mel Brooks. They honored uh, Dave Brubeck. They honored an opera singer. I'm forgetting her name. And then they honored the Springsteen. And I was in the uh, rhythm section for the band that they was handpicked to play Springsteen songs with artists. So the artists I performed with were my ex-boss, John Cougar Mellencamp, my ex-boss, Melissa Etheridge, uh, Sting, who I've never played with, Ben Harper, and then Jennifer Nettles from Sugarland. Uh, that was something I just report, did last week, and then that will be on TV December 29th. Oh. Um, I've just been in the studio recording a project I've been doing for about six months, an iPhone application called Mix Me In, uh, where you can download this application and you can see me, a cartoon version of me and the other musicians performing cover songs. Uh, right now, I think the only one you can download is um, Super Freak um, by... Um, What's his name? You know, da, 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 da. Rick James. Rick James, yeah. Da, da, da. Yeah, and it's a it's an application where you can touch the drums and you touch the uh, the character the Ike cartoon character of me and hear just what I'm doing. Touch the big guitar player here, just what he's doing. Touch the bass player here, what he's doing. Then you can mix it, and eventually you'll be able to buy an, an adapter and record your vocals into it with us. Uh, you will be able to record guitar, bass, drums. Um, and that's the future. Well, it should be that apparatus is being made right now. Uh, that's something I've been doing on a regular basis, uh, which is kind of cool being part of something that's new and contemporary because the iPhone app may be a new, uh, it may turn into a new way the music industry uh, gets music out there. It may be like the way people will be downloading music as opposed to going directly to your computer. You go directly to your phone. Uh, you know, through the internet. Yeah, your iPhone is going to become, or in this case, the iPhone is becoming like an iPod. Okay. So it's a phone iPod. That's sort of what seems like it, the future is heading. Um, and it also it becomes your iPhone becomes your computer, your iPod, and phone all in one thing. You and know? you're a pioneer so, into this. Uh, yeah, I'm sort of part of it. You know, I like that. I like it's kind of fun being part of something new. The, the, we've done recorded a hundred songs. Like some are like Ozzy Osbourne, some are you know, like Warren, some is like uh, Jane's Addiction, Weezer, country artists, um, everything. At Motown, it's just getting you know getting. We have to get it approved by the record labels or publishing companies, whoever owns the music, because there's certain laws that apply to uh, this technology that don't apply to making records. Right. There's different laws that apply to different, you know, different formats. Let's see, what else? Um, um, I've been in the studio doing different different projects, Some a, a bunch of unknown artists. Uh, I've got already a project and uh, an album in January, another one in February, another one in March, um, doing stuff with Fogarty. I did a three-and-a-half-week tour with Fogarty. Um I'm doing something with Chad Smith. I have this band I play with called the Bombastic Meat Bats, right. which is a, a band that Chad started, but he's been busy with uh, Chicken Foot and Chili Peppers, so he, I've been playing with them. I went to Japan with them on tour, but on the 19th on Drum Channel, uh, the Drum Channel, which is run by Dom Lombardi from the from DW, we're both, uh, Chad's interviewing me. And then I suggested that both of us play with the Meat Bats, which is what's going to happen. They're going to be on the Drum Channel live broadcast. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, that'll be. That's on the 19th. 19th of December. When's the last time you worked with Aldo Nova? Oh, a long time ago. Might have been when I did the his album, Blood on the Bricks, in, in the 90s. Yeah, 91. That early... Yep, that's the last time I. Or maybe it was that and then Blaze of Glory. He and I both worked on Blaze of Glory together. Where did you get the connection to work with John Bon Jovi on Blaze of Glory? 
Was it to Aldo Novo in uh, a sense? No, John Bon Jovi called me up. Yeah, he literally called me up on the phone and said, Kenny, this is John Bon Jovi. I went, you're kidding. Wow. He says, yeah, I have a project that I might want you to play on. And and that's what happened. He called me up. So I'll call you. Yeah, are you interested? Are you available? I said, absolutely. So then he said, I'll call you in a couple of weeks. He called me in a couple of weeks. And then he says, look at now, I got four songs. And it's for a movie soundtrack. I went, all right, cool. And then he said, I'll call you once I get this sorted out. He called me and said, I got the, we're going to make a whole album. I went, you're kidding. I'm excited. That's great. He says, but I got good news and I got bad news. I says, well, what's the good news? He says, Jeff Beck is playing on the record. <laughs> he says, what's the, bad, what's the bad news? He said, well, Jeff Beck wants to use Terry Bozio. I went, oh, wow, well. I can't argue with him. That sounds, who, you know, why wouldn't he want to use it? But in the end, the other producer, um, it was only a couple of days later, I, I got a call from the other producer, um, and he said, hey, Kenny, went to, what, who's your cartage company? And I told him, he says, well, tell him to have the drums at, at 10 o'clock. I went, dude, uh, have you been talking to John lately? I'm not doing the session. This is Terry Bodger. And the guy says, oh, that's ridiculous. He says, you're doing the session. We don't need Jeff. Jeff Beck's not going to record with us. Jeff Beck is not going to sit there and work 12 hours a day doing take after take after take. You bring him in afterwards. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and, and that, yeah, it's, yeah, it makes total sense. Being a session musician is one thing. Being an artist overdubbing a solo is a whole different thing. So, yeah, in the end, uh, I end up doing it and it was extremely successful of course oh super successful then you work with bon jovi again in 97 destination anywhere yeah yeah same concept yep. he calls you up yep mm -hmm. uh, you worked with john cougar mellencamp also throughout his big career and the, the major hits yeah 17 years that would have been your major break huh start with him yep yeah that was where did he discover you I was, we were living in the same town. I didn't even know him. I was living in Bloomington, Indiana. And he, uh, uh, I was, I was, I'd been playing in a, a, a band and I was decided I was going to move to New York City. Something in my gut told me it was time to move out of Bloomington and try to go to one of the cities, LA or New York. I decided to go to New York. And, uh, two weeks before I went, um, I ran into somebody, a singer songwriter, said that, John Bon Jovi, uh, I mean, John, John Mellencamp was, uh, had fired his drummer, and so I called somebody in the band and wanted to audition. And uh, I wasn't a huge fan of his music at that point. And I auditioned and won the audition. I practiced, took seven, eight hours a day, and memorized the songs and didn't really understand the simplicity of them all. I didn't understand why the drummer played so simple, but I, I did it and won the audition. And it took me two years to learn how to play uh, simple, learn how to play the less is more approach to music. It's really difficult playing for the song and playing simple when you're not used to it. It was really challenging. From going it was technical, to yeah. Play, yeah, it's much easier to play technical than to play uh, simple, because I didn't know it's still a challenge for me to play simple. <laughs> the ACDC type drumming doesn't come easy. No, it doesn't. I, I just did a Crocus record, and man, they analyzed every single cymbal crash, how much to open my hi-hats, what hi-hats to use, what snare drum, what drum heads, what sticks. They analyzed everything, and in the end, they were spot on. They were great. It was really hard to get the right, uh, get the hi-hats with the right amount of uh, pressure, to get them open just the right amount. I literally would do a take and, and email it to them, and they we did this eight times just for one song. They weren't in the studio with me. I was recording in L.A., and they were in Switzerland. But in the end, it really made a difference. They are very, very difficult to play like ACDC. They, they don't just... That stuff doesn't come by accident. They really have worked it out. The right sound of the hi-hats to go with the guitars, the right amount of accent going from loud to soft. To get that gucka, 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 gucka. The right volume on the kick drum, the snare drum. Once you establish a certain kind of feel to maintain it through the whole song, it's really difficult. So you record it with Crocus? 
Yeah, that record. Yeah, I did that. And that that all, yes, it sounded great. It sounds just like ACDC. And you've worked Good. with Meatloaf for a long time. Yep. Where did Meatloaf pick you up? Just from another gig? Did they just call me up? Everybody just calls you up. You have like um, so much great music you recorded throughout the years. Like, how many albums are you up to now? Uh, over five hundred. Almost five hundred albums. More. More than five hundred. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's hard, and I've, you know, yeah, it's hard to do that now. It's because the recording business is so. Everybody's doing it out of their homes, and it's not. It's not quite what it used to be. And were you an official member of Leonard Skinner in '99? Uh, they asked me to join, but I was. Um, I, I, they asked if I was interested, and I said yes, but somehow I can't remember why it didn't work out exactly. But they, I loved recording with them. That was incredible. They were they were great. It was like playing with the Rolling Stones, but other than rock version. How technical was it when you recorded with the Rolling Stones? Because you did work with them. Uh, that was more, I, I did just percussion. I played percussion. Me and Jim Kellner played percussion behind Charlie Watts. And it was more of a feel thing and playing around Charlie. That was the whole key. It's not technical, but it was about music. And then you end up working it with Mick Jagger again in 2001. Yeah, that, yeah, that was awesome. When you play simple like that, it can get very technical on a simple level. Sounds, how you hit the cymbals, how hard you hit the snare. I mean, it gets very technical that way. Did you ever see the the new uh, PlayStation 3 rock band drum sets and all that? Did you ever try them out? Tried it once. It was I was not very good at it. It's not. It's a game. It's a game of reaction. It's a game of reacting to life. And if you try to play in time and make it feel good, you are not rewarded with playing as a good musician. You're actually penalized for playing like a good musician. I suggest they come up, I come up with a version of that game where if you play in time and play with a good groove that you score points. Right. But I haven't done that yet. <laughs> well, you know, the iPhone app thing I'm doing to mix me in, eventually, once they get it so you can record an electronic drum into that, you it, 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 it actually you'll be it'll be a great learning tool because you'll then hear yourself playing with the, the musicians that I recorded with and you can hear if you're rushing or slowing down or how you sound. That'd be a great tool. Ken, when you were younger, how how many hours did you practice a, a day? Well, I'll just say it. When I was a little kid, I just didn't practice that much because I was just having fun. But by the time I was 18, I was practicing nine hours a day. Nine hours a day. When I was 18, after my last year of high school, preparing for college, I was practicing nine hours a day. A lot of it was orchestral. I was doing mallets and timpani and orchestral snare them. Because I was studying with the timpanists from the Boston, no, the percussionists from the Boston Symphony Orchestra, Arts of Press. So I was doing a lot of orchestral stuff also. When you played with Bob Dylan, how technical was that? Or was it smooth playing? Not, not, not very technical. It was more about uh, musicality. And feeling? Yeah. Coming up with the right parts. Bob would sit at the piano and start playing. You had to, you know, it was always it was a concern that I would play the wrong groove or the wrong beat. He didn't ever say anything. He only said one thing to me. The first day, he said, Hi, Bob. No, hi, Kenny. It's... Bob Dylan, nice to meet you. That was it. Never said another word to me. Wow. And that's how you recorded the album. Mm-hmm. That first day was Stevie Ray Vaughan, Jimmy Vaughan, um, Don was on bass, and Steve, uh, David Lindley, and then a couple other people. Yeah, it was. I got to work with Stevie Ray Vaughan the January before he died. Wow. How does it feel knowing that you play with all these greats? Do you have a good feeling inside? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love it. I hope I have the opportunity. I love it. It's really nice to be with great musicians. Very exciting. What do you do all day? Do you um, 
wake up in the morning, check your emails, you know. Uh, I get about a hundred. I, yeah, I get about a hundred emails every day. So I wake up and I do business, but a lot of times, I I wake up. First thing I do is take start. Uh, I take some green food, you know. Eat. Start trying to start by eating properly. Uh, and usually within, if I don't, most of the time I go to work to record or if I'm recording, I wake up usually about an hour and 15 minutes before I go to the session. I check my emails, answer them while I'm eating. And then I go to the studio and I'm usually gone all day and into the night. Um, and then during the day at the studio, I'm checking emails, responding. Uh, I never can keep up with it all. Um, I usually have about 300 emails I have to answer. Wow. They're always there. And then um, uh, if I'm not recording, like I could, I'm usually catching up. So I could spend sometimes, like if I have a day off and I'm on the road, I can spend eight, ten hours a day trying to catch up. And I have people uh, that work for me too, you know, so I can handle all my bills and my website and my, you know, I, uh, an assistant, you know, that also handles all my personal stuff and yeah, I just don't have enough time to do it all. That is incredible. So basically, you you play and work constantly, twenty four seven. Mhm. Yep. No time off. No, I'm gonna have some time off next week, but I will be catching up. Yeah, catching up and also taking some meetings and getting ready for two thousand ten. Well, Kenny, it's been a pleasure. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much.